for f of x equals 1 over x and g of x equals the square root of x minus 1, we need to write the domain of f composed with g at x in interval notation. Okay, so first thing is, you guys should have spotted this out, that this is a composite function. And if you guys have been going along with the playlist, and I suggest you guys do that, especially if you want to know everything about math and do well on your math class, uh, you should know that I do not like this notation. So I would prefer using the other notation for composite functions. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. And that's what you guys have to memorize. They are equivalent to each other, just two different types of notations. The other one just makes it easier to see what's going on. So this equals f of g of x. Now you can clearly see that this is the inner function because it's the innermost with parentheses and the f function is the outer function. With composite functions you always work from inner to outer, meaning the parentheses. And the first thing with composite functions is you're going to put in an input for the inner function and solve. But for this case, they just told us g of x. So one, I'm just going to say what g of x was. g of x was the square root of x minus one. That's a little bit too, there we go. And now for the second part, you take that answer, it's gonna be the new input that we just solved for and plug it in into the outer function. So for the second part, the outer function was the f function but now it's the answer to what you just wrote. Which means that anytime that you see a x value, you're now just plugging in what you have. So instead of it being one over x, you're just replacing this whole thing. So it's gonna be one over the square root of x minus one. Okay, now we just gotta find the domain. For domains, you need to know your exclusion you know, theoretical ideas. For domain, we always care about the numbers that won't make the function, uh, won't make it make any sense. This is coming from square roots, so a value underneath a square root and denominators, when you have a value, x value in the denominator. Just know that for square roots, you can have an x value just be greater than or equal to zero. So no negative values under a square root. However, for x values, you can have negatives, you can have positives, but you just cannot have anything equal to zero. All right, so that's when, oh gosh, hold on. <laughs> there you go. So that's when things get a little hairy, all right? So just know your two exclusion values for uh, square roots and denominators. However, for our case, lovely, we have a double whammy. We have a square root and we have a denominator. So we kind of have to use these two ideas together. Um, I'm gonna start off with the square root. It's just easier, I guess. So anything that's underneath the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? So first thing, let's just solve for zero and see where the cutoff is. So x minus one, since that's the whole thing under the square root, let's see if I set it equal to zero, I get an x value of one, which means that technically um, x has to be greater than or equal to one. Because if I plug in a one here, one minus one is zero and the square root will make it good. However, now it's trapped underneath a uh, the denominator, right? And the denominator says it cannot be equal to zero. So what are we gonna do with this thing? Hmm, can it be equal to one? If I do one minus one, that's zero. The square root says it's okay, but then the square root of zero is zero. And can we have a zero in the denominator? Absolutely not. So I'm just going to take away this equal sign. So now I know that x can only be greater than one. 
and then all other numbers greater than one up until infinity is okay. So here is my domain. I'm going to start at one. I have to exclude it and with domain notation excluding is parentheses inclusive numbers are brackets but I have to exclude it because it cannot be equal to one but I can go all the way up until infinity however infinity is just a theoretical concept it's not actually a numerical value so I exclude that as well and here is your lovely domain for this composite function that we found out and that's it quick and simple guys but hey, I mean, if you guys could do this and you guys know your domain exclusion properties, you guys are going to be so good. All right. So let me know in the comments what you thought. Give this video a like if it helped you. If you want to subscribe to the channel and help us out, uh, please hit the subscribe button. And I thank you so much for that. Let's keep going with the math, guys. I'm having fun. I hope you guys are too. Um, yeah. So I'll see you in the next lesson. All right. Have an awesome day and happy studying.